Okay, well, it's finally happened. Unity has fired their CEO. Good news for all the shareholders involved. It's unexpected news. I actually got this, I got tagged in this post earlier tonight and I immediately wanted to hop on and share some thoughts on this news because this has been something that we've been following as the story has been developing around Unity's pricing changes and how John Riccatello is fundamentally the biggest bear case to Unity stock and now he's gone. So let's talk about it. Okay, so first and foremost, this video is gonna be fairly off the cuff. Um, we are gonna be reading the, the press release around this. Now, first thing I saw when I Googled this, a lot of news outlets are saying that John Riccatello is you know, retiring from the gaming space, that he's stepping back, but let's not mince words here. He is actually leaving effective immediately and he's also leaving from the board. You don't have that when you're just retiring, just the immediate sudden abrupt change. This is happening as a result of those pricing changes that were introduced uh, a couple weeks ago, the whole fiasco that happened there. You know, John Riccatello has been running Unity for the last nine years as CEO. I mentioned this in a previous video that Unity CEO would not be there long as a result of his nearing retirement age, Vitaly and I actually talked about this, and I said, look, I know John Riccatello is the bear case. How long can he feasibly be there for? Because he's, I think, 62 years old, something to that effect. And turns out, not very long. Just, an, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks after that, he was let go, but the transition of him being let go effective immediately and not having a place on the board, these are two factors that lead me to believe that he was immediately fired as a result of this backlash. And don't forget the board does take notice of these things, right? Unity stock went down from $38 a share down to $29 a share where it currently hovers. The pricing decisions that were made were haphazard at best, uh, malicious at worst illegal even you could argue with the whole agreements being retroactive which they quickly walked back they pissed off a whole bunch of their core demographic in terms of those game developers and quite frankly the mark witten was the one who actually stepped in front of this thing and took ownership the lead of unity create and it wasn't john riccatello which left a lot of people wondering hey if the buck stops with the ceo why isn't the ceo stepping in front of this train wreck that has been happening to this company. The board is now effectively removing John Riccatello. So I wanted to say that right off the bat before you read CNBC articles that's saying, oh, yo, you know, he's stepping down, he's served for nine years. You know, this CEO is very money focused. He's a very business oriented CEO. And as a result of that, doesn't really have a very intimate understanding of the core value proposition of Unity as a game engine and will always make short term financially lucrative decisions at the expense of the core target demographic. And Unity is a company that is a monopoly in the space, right? It's Unity and Epic, but in the mobile gaming space, Unity is really the only game in town. You cannot really be gouging your consumers to that extent without actually having thought it through or at the very least having consulted with your user demographic. Let's read the press release and go through some of the tidbits of who's going to be replacing John Riccatello, what's coming up next, what can we expect from this news. The press release, which was released on October 9th earlier today at 4.30 p.m. after the market have closed. By the way, Unity is up about 1.5%, um, I think it was, as a result of this news. Initially, it traded a little bit sideways, but eventually it went up as a result of this news. The press release is titled Unity Announces Leadership Transition, James M. Whitehurst Appointed Interim Chief Executive Officer and President. The company reaffirms their third quarter 2023 guidance. So basically, you know, nothing is really gonna change in the numbers. They don't wanna spook the market. They are just announcing this leadership change. The company to release third quarter 2023 financial results on November the 9th. So this is coming up fairly quick in a couple weeks. The press release begins here saying that John Riccatello will retire as president, chief executive officer, chairman, and a member of the company's board of directors effective immediately. Again, that is not something that you would say for somebody who has gallantly served through the past nine years and is now retiring and is sailing off into the sunset. This is somebody who was just fired. Uh, James N. Whitehurst has been appointed the interim CEO, president, and a member of the board. And obviously John Riccatello is gonna to continue to advise Unity to ensure a smooth transition. The press release continues to say the board will initiate a comprehensive search process with the assistance of a leading exec search firm to identify a permanent CEO. It goes on to say some good things about John Riccatello, you know, leading Unity through the IPO and that it wouldn't be where it was today. Probably would have been higher because when he was the CEO of EA, EA traded flat for quite a long time. 
John Riccatello said, it's been a privilege. Um, I mean, all of these are fairly boilerplate statements, but he looks forward to supporting Unity through the transition and wishes the company the best. Now, let's talk a little bit about James Whitehurst, who is this new person who has now stepped in as the interim CEO. Well, James Whitehurst was the senior advisor and president at IBM joining through IBM's acquisition of Red Hat, which is an open source enterprise IT product and service company where he served as a CEO from 2008 to 2020. So a very tenured veteran in the software space. He said in his statement that, you know, he's confident that Unity is gonna be well positioned to continue enhancing its platform, strengthening its community of developers and partners, and focusing on growth and profitability goals. And he anticipates a seamless transition. And one thing I found interesting here in the little bio section about James Whitehurst is towards the bottom here, Mr. Whitehurst currently serves on the board of directors of United Airlines and Amplitude on the supervisory board of Software AG and as a special advisor at Silver Lake. Silver Lake is the largest largest shareholder of Unity. If we just look at uh, Fintel, which highlights insider ownership of Unity, the Silver Lake holds about 35 million shares of Unity, more than Vanguard, BlackRock, ARK Invest, and others, more than State Street, uh, so on and so forth. So for James Whitehurst to have a good relationship with Silver Lake, Silver Lake was probably the ones on the board who pushed John Riccatello out and put in you know, one of their own special advisors in James Whitehurst, at least to facilitate that transition. Definitely someone who is seasoned, especially leading Red Hat for such a long time. This I think is gonna be fine. But again, this is not somebody that we need to look so scrutinously at because I think that by Q3 earnings, possibly a little bit later than Q3 earnings, but definitely before the end of the year, we should have a candidate for the permanent CEO as to who Unity is gonna to elect to be their new uh, leader going forward. Now, one thing I will say, this is great news, right? I don't know if you could tell from my tone, but basically we knew for a long time that John Riccatello was the wrong CEO choice from Unity. And ultimately the pricing decision was the last nail in the coffin that ruined the company's relationship with many of the gaming studios, the software development firms, leveraging the Unity platform, which was as a re direct result of Riccatello's mantra of basically gouging customers. Uh, I, when I talked to Vitaly, I mean, we made two videos about this. One of the videos was the initial news of them introducing a runtime fee, which basically charged developers per install. And then the second video was about a week later where they rolled everything back and simply introduced like a flat revenue share model as a result of the backlash that they've gotten. But basically John Riccatello, you know, he's a deep business person. Uh, he was at EA for quite a while. The, the stock actually underperformed for the time that he was there. He's, uh, you know, the person largely responsible for if you've ever played an EA game before all of the in-app purchases that you have to make in something like a FIFA game. That's John Riccatello, basically. And look, Unity is a company that, in my opinion, at this stage of the company's growth, demands either a product or an engineering leader, somebody who deeply understands the value proposition of the core product offering, the Unity engine, but as well understands the landscape and relationships with the developers of these indie firms and can better leverage that innovation through technology and actually capitalize profitability, not by raising prices and cornering the market, but by actually providing software solutions that these developers will leverage. So that's just my, you know, two cents. I think as a conclusion, you know, over this past couple of weeks, I have sold a good chunk of my Unity shares. I think about, you know, 35 to 40% of my shares. I've just reallocated that money into SoFi. I want to see who will be the new permanent CEO before buying back into Unity heavier. You know, Unity is a single digit percentage in my portfolio. It's quite small, especially after I've cut my position. I wanna be looking for the new permanent CEO. So not this James Whitehurst, uh, you know, character, but I want to see someone who I feel confident can lead the business because I think that the company has a deep moat in terms of their value proposition. They are a monopoly in the space. You know, it's them against Epic, but in, in mobile, they have, uh, you know, a moat around that business. And quite frankly, Riccatello was the only bear case, the biggest bear case for this company. I expect by Q3, they're gonna have somebody announced. I'm really looking forward to see who it's gonna be, 
But uh, if it doesn't happen by Q3, because that's only a couple of weeks away, I mean, it takes a lot of time to vet these candidates, even if they have their own connections. Maybe by the end of the year, we'll, we'll definitely you know see a CEO. I don't think it's going to be in an interim CEO position for much longer. Again, the market is taking this positively. We'll see how it opens tomorrow morning. Uh, I won't have a chance to make a video tomorrow, but I'm going to be taking a good look at the stock periodically to see how the market is taking this news. I definitely think it's absolutely good news. I know a lot of people in the developer community absolutely hated John Riccatello. If you ever go to the Unity subreddit, if you ever go to X and look at Unity, um, if you ever look at the replies on my previous videos, you have countless software developers who are bashing on John Riccatello for the simple fact that he is somebody that will sacrifice the longevity of a partnership with Indie Dev Studio for the immediate monetization dollars in his pockets. That is not somebody you want leading the company. And so the board definitely made the right decision in my personal opinion. I think many shareholders are rejoicing this decision and I'm looking forward to see who is gonna be coming up next, but definitely the right move for Unity, especially after this backlash, because it shows that the company is willing to backtrack, is willing to listen to the developer community and is willing to actually make positive changes. For right now, this is the Fundamentals Investing Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.